just wanted to talk very briefly on how we do some of these um, experiments proving all of these crazy theories, right? We talked about this transition state theory, which is rather obscure, um, uh, along with the uh, diffusion limited or activation limited. And so doing these in solution phase is quite challenging. Um, so the uh, result is to do these in what we call a crossed molecular beam experiment. Um, and this is how we really determine um, all of the stuff we want to know about our elementary reactions. And so as you guys are starting to look up more and more stuff on your Kinetica project, um, especially all these crazy small molecule radical reactions, right? Like how do they measure the rate constant of something, uh, you know, two radicals interacting, right? How do they do that? It's, it's exceedingly difficult. Um, but there's a really cool set of apparatus um, uh, that are used. And so I'm going to describe that now. So it starts um, with what we call a uh, supersonic nozzle. Okay. Um, and so that's got several components to it. So typically we would have some, you know, source of molecules. And you notice here it says that like it's got, this is in an oven and in a pinhole. So what that typically means is on this side of the pinhole, it's going to be, um, oops, I can't spell, uh, vacuum. And on this side of the pinhole, it's at atmospheric pressure. And so what that means is if you wanted to know all of this stuff, if you wanted to study a complicated mechanism of a liquid reaction, right? Um, you could put that liquid in this oven, heat it up, you know, vaporize it, right? And in this pinhole, those reactants will be sucked through. And so as you might imagine, this is very much like the Joule Thompson effect, right? There's going to be a throttling of these gases. So they are going to cool down as they pass through this first pinhole. And they are going to want to expand out just like we talked about, okay? When we were talking about the Joule Thompson effect. However, if you put a device in here called a skimmer, um, and it, it really is just a simple cone. I mean, that's all that it is. It's like a cone with another pinhole. Um, then what happens is only molecules with the right uh, trajectory will make it through. And in fact, you usually have to use several of these skimmers in a uh, series, right, to really funnel down your beam, okay? Um, and so you also use a device called a collimator, and so that also has a similar effect as the skimmer. Okay, so this is obviously a pretty simplified diagram. Um, but what you end up with, um, so at high vacuum, so I'm actually I'm going to write that as a UHP, which stands for ultra high, uh, UHV ultra high vacuum. You now have a beam of molecules traveling in a very regular direction, which is very cool, right? This is not what molecules normally do, right? They scatter, they move around all over the place. Um, so, so this device is quite sophisticated. And so I'll just remind you, right, what the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution looks like, right? You've got a wide distribution of molecules, uh, but coming out of your uh, supersonic nozzle here, the molecules, for one, they're going to be really fast. That's why it's called supersonic. Um, but two, they're going to have this very narrow, almost single speed. Almost, not quite, but almost. And that's why they're able to line up like these little soldiers, okay? So now, as you might guess, one of these is complicated, so why not have two of them, right? Um, and so this is how we get the crossed molecular beam experiment, where we literally have two crossed molecular beams, and we actually fire molecules at each other in an attempt to get them to collide at a regular spot. This can be done. It's very difficult, but it can be done. And I, I think this is going to definitely win a Nobel Prize um, in the coming years. So this technique was largely um, invented in the 80s and the 90s. Okay. 
And so as you might imagine, you can put a detector here and that could be a mass spectrometer. So let's list all the things that that could be. It could be a mass spec. It could be a photodiode. Okay. Um, and, and I guess typically, you know, those would be the two most common. So if you had a mass spec, um, then your collision product, right? Your molecules are going to collide. And because they're not colliding head on there, you, you purposefully make them collide at this angle where the product will now go flying off into your detector. So if you put a mass spec there, you can detect that. Okay. Which is cool. But if you put a photodiode in there, you can actually see if there's some type of chemiluminescent reaction going on. Okay. Or if you're really interested in all of these vibrational energy levels, like this crazy weird thing I was talking about, um, you could put an infrared photodiode there and you could actually then measure the vibrational states of the molecule. Or if you put a microwave detector, you could measure the rotational states of the molecule. Um, so this is very, very cool. And it's this type of technology um, that has allowed us to actually measure and and confirm all of these crazy theories that I've been talking about. Um, okay, folks, so that's all I wanted to, to say about experiments in transition state theory.